Hi everybody, welcome to the next lecture. And in this lecture, we are going to be working on balancing redox reactions. So when we get to redox reactions, we are really trying to attempt to balance electron transfer between different species in solution. And in order to do this, we usually break down our reactions into what's known as half reactions, where we look at the oxidation and the reduction portions. Now, this can be done in acidic medium or acidic solution or basic medium where there would be hydroxide present. So we're going to take a look at both of these today. We'll start with the acidic solution and then we will move to the basic solution because the basic solution really just is working through the entire acidic solution and then adding a step at the end. So let's go ahead. We're going to take a look at two reactions. I'm going to do one for the acidic and then one for the basic. So we have some variety here. All right. So let's start with the reaction itself. We're going to have iron 2 plus and the chromate ion Cr2 O7 2 minus. And that is going to yield iron 3 plus and chromium 3 plus. Right. So this, first of all, is not balanced. You can see that from the chromium atoms. You've got two on the left and one on the right. So in order to balance this, we are going to start by breaking it down into the half reactions. And that means that one portion of this reaction is an oxidation and the other portion of this reaction is a reduction. Now it's important that you remember what oxidation and reduction mean. So you can use whatever mnemonic you like. I prefer Leo Gur. Some people use oil rig. Okay. But the point here is that loss of electrons is oxidation. Gain of electrons is reduction. So keeping that in mind, we also want to remember that electrons are negatively charged particles, which means that the positive charge will increase as electrons are removed or lost. So because iron is going from 2 plus to 3 plus, it's increasing its proton uh, charge, or it's essentially you're seeing 3 plus over 2 plus. So in a case like that, it's lost an electron. So that would be the oxidation portion here. So we can go ahead and put iron 2 plus is going to go to iron 3 plus. All right, now if you look, the chromium here, okay, oxygen is going to be 2 minus a piece. So 2 minus times 7 would be 14 minus. Now 2 of that minus is accounted for here in the charge. So that really leaves 12 minus for this oxygen as far as its oxidation number, which means if I have two chromiums, they have to be plus 6 each. And I see over here that chromium goes to 3 plus. So going from 6 plus to 3 plus means I've reduced the positive charge. I must have gained electrons in that process. And a gain in electron is reduction. So in the reduction portion, I'm going to put the chromium equation. All right, now if you look, the iron is just iron. However, the chromium has some oxygen bound up with it. And this is going to be a common occurrence when you start getting into these types of reactions. So how are we going to go about balancing it from this point forward since there's no oxygen present on the product side for the chromium reaction? And the answer here is that we are going to end up adding water. All right, but before we do that, what I want to do is balance the electrons for the oxidation and then we'll balance the electrons for the reduction because that one's a little more difficult. Okay, so for the oxidation, we would say I've got iron 2 plus and it is going to yield iron 3 plus plus one electron. All right, so the goal here is that the balance is charged uh, the, the, excuse me, the charges balance on each side. That's what I wanted to say there. Okay, so it's going to be 2 plus over here, and it would be 2 plus over here because we have 3 plus and 1 minus from the electron, so there's a total of 2 plus over there, right? So this is the goal of redox. We're balancing these types of reactions here with the charges. So what about the reduction? Because that one was a little more complicated. 
So we've got Cr2O7 2 minus is going to go to Cr3 plus, and now I can add my water. So if I have seven oxygens present in the reactant side, I'm going to need seven present in the product side. And since water comes with one oxygen per molecule, I'm going to have seven waters. Now you've introduced hydrogen on the product side. So now we need to balance out with hydrogen on the reactant side. And I can easily do that. This is where we get into talking about acidic medium. All I need to do is add some H plus. And if I have a total of 14 hydrogens due to the seven waters, then all I have to do is provide 14 hydrogens over here. All right, so now from a perspective of the equation here, I've done my oxygen, I've done my hydrogen. The only other thing that I'm going to need to do is balance the chromium. I have two on the left, so I am going to need a two over on the right here. All right, so this at this point would be considered a balanced half reaction, right? So these are the half reactions, but I need to check my electrons and my charges for the reduction now that I've gone through and I've balanced the oxygens, the hydrogens. So what I do is I take a look at the total charge here. Well, I have 14 plus because it's one plus for each hydrogen. And then this over here is two minus. So the net charge that I'm going to find over here is going to be 12 plus, right? Now, if I come over here and I take a look, I've got two of the three pluses for the chromiums, so that's six plus, and water is neutral, so I'm not going to give any charge for that. So I say I've got 12 plus over here and six plus over here. They have to even out by adding electrons, which are negative, so then I'm going to need to put plus six electrons here, because if I put a minus six charge with the plus 12, that will become plus six as the net charge there, and those sides will balance out. All right. So this is the balancing of the half reactions when we get to these examples. Now, we're not done yet. What we want to do is move on and balance the full reaction where we are going to end up eliminating the electrons. They're going to be sort of like spectator ions and they'll drop out. Okay. So balancing this, we have to consider, okay, so let's move down. What we're going to do is we're going to draw two arrows. One will be for the oxidation, one will be for the reduction, and then we'll combine everything at the end. Okay, so we said that the oxidation was going to be Fe2+, plus, goes to iron 3+, plus, plus one electron, right? And then over here, I'm going to start back a little bit just to give myself enough space. I'm going to say 14 H+, plus, plus the Cr207, two minus plus six electrons. Okay, and that is going to yield two Cr3 plus plus seven H2O. So all I did here is line up my balanced half reactions in order to combine them here. Now I have to have equal amounts of electrons. So I have six down in the reduction portion, but I only have one up in the oxidation. So the iron oxidation is going to need to happen six times in order to produce the proper number of electrons, which would be six, right? So now I would have six electrons on the product side and six electrons on the reactant side. So I can cross them out like a common ion. Okay, and then I combine this to get the final answer. And what I would end up with is six iron two plus, right? Because that six had to be distributed uh, in order to balance the electrons plus 14 hydrogen ions plus the Cr2O7 two minus yields, and it's nice when you line it up like this because you can see everything on the reactants and the product side. Okay, so yields six of the oxidized iron three plus, plus two of the chromium three plus, plus we still have our seven waters. 
And that is how you would balance a redox reaction in acidic medium or acidic solution. All right. Now, what happens with basic solution? Because we said you can do it in acidic solution or you can do it in basic solution. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch over and take a look at basic. And this will involve a new reaction because I want us to see practice with this. So in this case, we're going to use a permanganate ion with an iodide ion. So what we'll end up with is the unbalanced redox equation is going to be MnO4 minus plus I minus is going to yield manganese oxide plus molecular iodine. So I'm going to need to break these down. And again, I'm going to need to know what is oxidized and what is reduced. So if you're ever confused with this, you need to go back and review your oxidation numbers, how to assign oxidation numbers. So when we take a look at this here, all right, let's start with the uh, iodine. This iodine has a charge of one minus and neutral iodine in its regular state is going to have an oxidation number of zero. So if I've gone from one minus to zero, I have given or lost an electron because even though zero is not a um, positive number as far as one, two, three, four, it is still when I'm going from negative one to zero for the charge, it's a loss of electron bringing it up to that zero. So this would be an oxidation. I had to lose an electron to go from a negative charge to a neutral charge. So the iodine is the oxidation. We're going to do iodide ion goes to molecular iodine, right? And then that would mean the reduction here, okay? So that would be the manganese, which is going from the permanganate into the manganese oxide. And that is our reduction portion. All right. So again, you can see the reduction here is going to need some water balancing. And when we take care of that, then we'll talk about after we combine everything, how do you do the basic medium instead of the acidic medium. But 90% of the basic process is going to be the acidic process. You're only going to change a step in the end. So just be aware of that. All right. So moving forward, let's go ahead and knock out the balancing of the oxidation half reaction because that looks easy. Okay, all I need is a two in front of the iodide and I'm good to go there. Okay, now I have to keep in mind that based on this, there are two electrons that are going to be transferred, right? If I have two I minuses, meaning a one minus and a one minus, then that has to happen twice in order to create I2. So there's a loss of two electrons in that process. Okay, now let's go ahead and start looking at the manganese. So for the manganese, we'll start by saying we've got MnO4 minus is going to go to MnO2. Now, let's take a look at the amount of water we need. We've got four oxygen on the left, we have two on the right. So the total I need would be two water because I just need two additional oxygens here, okay? And if I need two water molecules, then that means I would need four acidic hydrogens to balance out the water hydrogens, right? And then if we take a look, the actual manganese itself looks balanced. There's no issue with the MN uh, atom there. So now I can take a look at the charges. Well, on the left, I've got four plus from the hydrogens and one minus. So what I'm going to come up with there would be a total of three plus. And if I take a look over here, I've got a neutral compound and a neutral compound. So the charge is zero. So that means I'm going to need to add three electrons to the reactant side in order to make that balance out to zero. And that way, both sides are net and I can move forward with the final balancing act. Okay, so give ourselves a little more space there. Draw your two arrows to line up. Let's take our iodine. So we've got two iodide, and that is going to go to 
a diatomic iodine plus two electrons. And then on the other side here, we've got our manganese ion plus the four H plus plus we said we want three electrons here. So we're going to have a common factor of six between the two and the three. Okay, and then we've got manganese oxide over here, plus we still have our two waters. Alrighty, so I'm going to need to do a factoring of three and a factoring of two. That'll get six electrons, one on the left, one on the right, so that'll drop out. And then I can go ahead and write my net. So when I'm putting these numbers down here, keep in mind I'm distributing all of these, right? So I'm going to have 6i minus to start, and then I'll go along just like that. So I'll have 6 of the iodide plus 2 of the permanganates plus 8 of the acidic hydrogens, okay? Electrons dropped out. So then I go over to three of the molecular iodines plus two of the manganese oxide plus four water. Okay, so at this point, this would be the balanced acidic equation, but we want to go in the basic solution, meaning we want hydroxide present instead of H+. So this last step is actually pretty easy. The only thing you need to do here is any of the acidic protons, you have to put an equal amount of hydroxide to neutralize them. So that's going to create water. Now, what I do to one side, I have to do to another. So if I'm going to add 8 hydroxide to the left, I also have to add 8 hydroxide to the products. Now, when this comes together, I'm going to create eight waters. Okay, There are four waters over here, so those will cancel out. And instead of eight waters, I'll drop that by half down to four. So in other words, similar to the electrons, if I'm going to have something on the left and the right, I need to cancel out whatever is common, and then whatever remains is what can get factored into the final equation. So now let's restructure this one more time for the true final equation in basic medium. So that was it. That was the only step for the base. All right, so you're going to have 6i minus plus 2MnO4 minus, sorry about the phone there, okay, plus you're going to have 4 water, that's going to yield 3I2 plus 2 of the manganese oxide plus 8OH minus. So now I do not have any H plus left in solution, but what I do have is plenty of hydroxide ions that are around. So now this is a balanced redox in the basic medium. All right, so that's going to conclude the lecture. I hope everybody found this useful. Uh, please remember to like if the video was helpful and subscribe for regular updates as you're working through your chemistry work and preparing for your career. I would also ask that if you have any questions, you're welcome to leave a comment and you can reach out and I will do my best to get back to you. And at some point, if you have time, go check out our website. We've got a lot of free resources over there and I also have some uh, paid for guides that help to support the channel and all the free content we produce. So other than that, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm Professor Tomney and I will see everybody in the next video.